Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. In this episode, we're talking about pilot flight equipment for student pilots. So we're going to go through everything you need for your PPL course in terms of equipment, how much it costs, where to get it from and when you should get it. Now, in my opinion, you should get the equipment as soon as you've decided that you're going to start a course of training. Some of this equipment you're going to need straight away. OK, so first thing that you're going to need straight away is this thing. It's your pilot's logbook. OK, so in here, you're going to record every single flight you do in your logbook. This is a legal document. OK, and you'll carry this with you um, and you keep hold of this. You know, when you finish the PPO, you can continue using it and eventually you'll need another logbook as it runs out. OK, so that's the first thing. It's also slightly cheaper to buy it in this kind of manner in a kit form than it is to buy it individually. The second thing, which is massively overlooked if you buy the equipment individually, is this thing. Okay, this is Flying Book One. Now, in Flying Book One, it details every single flight you're going to do. So, every flight lesson, it has a corresponding exercise number which is relevant to the PPL syllabus or LAPL syllabus. So, in here, for example, we've got exercise four. This is effects of controls. OK, so this is one of the, the lessons you're going to do as part of your trial lesson, actually, is exercise three and four. So it tells you in detail about the airmanship, about, you know, threat and error management, all this kind of stuff through every single lesson that you do. So this is really important. And for us, it's a prerequisite that you've read upon the exercise that you're about to complete before you come in. So flying book one. Right, let's move on to the next thing. So textbooks, you're going to need some textbooks on, on your subjects. Now, in this kit, there's a series of textbooks here covering each and every subject. So we've got human factors. We've got in this book, slightly bigger book, but it covers three subjects. So we've got meteorology, navigation, flight planning. And this is all AFE stuff, by the way. So um, these guys, they do uh, really good textbooks, which are you know very much so in line with the current set of uh, theory exams. So they're the ones that we use. So in this one, we've got principles of flight, aircraft general knowledge, flight planning and performance. In this one, this is a slightly thinner one, but it's just communication. So this is purely around the subject of communications. And in these books, you know, you've got a series of pictures and texts that, that go with it. And in some instances, you've got things like these uh, progress checks. So you can actually do questions in the book to check your progress with your revision. OK, so they're quite handy. They're not just a, a theory book about the subject. There is some element of test in there as well. Operational procedures. Again, it's another single subject book, but you've got several progress checks in here. You know, there's a lot of really useful information. You know, people these days are sort of adverse to, to reading books. I still believe that you should be reading books as well as using any online material. This is air law book. So this one here particularly, this is the first one I'd be studying. For us, air law and communications are the two exams that we require people to have passed in order to go first solo, for example. So in here again, the subject of air law and you've got some progress tests and things in there to check how you're doing with your revision so that's your theory books so there are nine subjects but in actual fact looking at that we've only got six books and that's because some of the books have multiple subjects in them okay this thing's quite handy as well so this is the ppl syllabus so this is the afe ppl syllabus and in here again there's a description of each lesson you do if your school doesn't have like digital records and things, you can actually record your progress within this book and use it as a document as well. But this is really handy, especially for the theory stuff, because you've got in here the actual learning objectives, which are what you know the, the points that are required for each section of, of that um, subject. So, for example, we've got 
Air Law 1, International Aviation Law, and it goes through three bullet points on that. Then we've got Air Law 2, Rules of the Air, Applicability and Compliance, Pilot and Command Responsibilities, Pre-Flight Actions. So it breaks it all down into little steps for you, okay? So again, that's a really good thing to have. Other books, so we have this thing here, the Skyway Code. This is very much like the highway code, <laughs> funnily enough, but for this guy. So there are things in here uh, that are really handy, like uh, talking about mass and balance performance, all that kind of stuff. So this book here is a VFR flight guide. So for every single airport that we visit, there are what we call plates. Now these things here are the plates. So you can see on here the runway orientation, it tells you information about the taxiways, tells you about the runway length, the circuit patterns, all that kind of stuff. Really important stuff in there. It tells you contact numbers for people, you know, what type of services they can offer you when you get there. So this is a really good document to have. This is actually um, slightly out of date now. This one I've got in my hand, it's a 2023 one. Uh, they do publish them yearly. So next thing, really important, you always carry this with you, is your chart. So this is a chart, and they're split up into different areas, okay? So this is what we call the Southern England and Wales chart. They have addition numbers on them as well. So what you have to be careful of is you've got one that's in date, okay? So just make sure you've got the latest edition. So that's paper stuff. Now, now we've got other equipment. So we have a square protractor there. That's for measuring your uh, headings your um, on your chart. When you're plotting lines on your chart, you can check the headings on there. We have this thing, this is really good. This is a diversion plotter, okay? So when you're in the aircraft and you're trying to plan diversions, they can be quite stressful. A diversion plotter is really, really good for helping you make it uh, a little bit more simple. Uh, also, we've got a scale rule for measuring the lines you draw on your chart to see uh, how long each leg is. Now, for calculating things like wind speed and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, how it's going to affect your, your track, you've got this horrible looking thing here. AFE call it an ARC1, Pulleys call it a CRP1. There's a five version as well, which is slightly bigger. That's what the commercial guys tend to use, a CRP5. They all work the same way, but it's essentially an old slide rule. You can get computerized versions of these now. Uh, we still use these ones, they're, they're pretty good. Um, and I think they're a good skill to have as well. So for your charts, you will need some pens. Okay, so these are marker pens to use on your charts. They, they're not, um, Permanent, permanent, you can wipe them off, but they, they're not like your sort of whiteboard markers where they'll come off on your hand, you know, they're, they're sort of semi-permanent, okay? Other than that, you're gonna need one of these. Now, this is what we call a VFR plug. So when you go flying, you do need to record your headings, um, you know, your times, all that kind of stuff to take into the aircraft with you. And when you're actually recording your times and things, it's really important to, to have a structured pad here to, to put it down on. So on, on this one, it, they're really good because you, you've got all the information in a very compact kind of uh, A5 style thing, which will fit on a kneeboard, which comes next thing in there. Okay, so your kneeboard, it's got like a Velcro strap. So you strap it to your leg and that enables you then to easily write without making a mess of your sheet and, and it falling on the floor as well. So this thing's permanently strapped to your leg and this thing is actually clipped on to your leg as well, on, on, on the board as well rather. So next thing is all of that stuff, right? It's pretty hard to carry around with you. So you're gonna need a bag. Now we've got these really nice pilot bags here. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera very well, but it looks a bit like a, you know, it, it looks a bit like a doctor's bag actually, but it is a pilot bag. Um, in there, you've got various different pockets where you can keep pens, all that kind of stuff. You can split it out. I actually bought one of these bags on its own just to use as a work bag because it's really, really good. It's got loads of really useful pockets in there uh, make it very easy to carry 
all of the equipment you need. We sell these for 249 quid. Okay, I think they're the same on the AFE website, so you can order them direct online. They'll be delivered to your door, afeonline.com. Like I say, we do keep these in stock and we, we use these for all of our students. They're really, really good quality kit. And like I say, the best time to get this pretty much is straight away as soon as you've decided you're on a course, because actually you need this kit straight away and you don't want to be kind of buying it as you go when you might need it during that lesson. So next thing which isn't included in the flying kits is you do need an accurate timepiece. Okay, so when I say an accurate timepiece, a, a watch will suffice. So don't take your phone. A phone is a pain in the arse. You have to unlock it sometimes to see the times on it. And also it can ring unless you put it in airplane mode, all that kind of stuff. So don't use your phone, it's a pain in the arse. Get a proper watch and wear it, okay? Um, and you'll also need a stop watch. Now, I used to use a stopwatch on my watch and actually it was a pain in the ass again because you're having to scroll through menus whilst you're flying to try and get the stopwatch to reset and all that kind of shit. So don't do that. Get a separate stopwatch, a really simple stop start one. Some of the best ones are actually the old analog ones with the, you know, an analog needle that goes around on it. Um, but get a stopwatch. So you need a, a watch and a stopwatch. Okay, preferably two separate things rather than a combined one, okay? Next thing is Sky Demon is something we're gonna talk about. Now, Sky Demon is a VFR flight planning app. Okay, so you've got it, it's got a moving map, but it's got your weather on there, it's got your NOTAMs, um, it's got all kinds of information on there that's really, really useful. Now, you're not allowed to use that during a test. They're allowing us to introduce it to training. And the reason being is some of the functions like um, the airspace avoidance, you know, we, we've got huge amounts of airspace now in the UK, and it's very difficult trying to navigate that airspace VFR with just dead reckoning, okay? People bust airspace all of the time, and for that reason, for airspace avoidance, it's really good. You can also get a device called a Sky Echo, which can then give you um, basically like a TCAS system, it's traffic avoidance on your iPad as well. So there's a whole heap of reasons why you might want to start using that. But the key thing is, is that you should still be able to navigate in the old way, as in dead reckoning. So with a chart, stopwatch, compass, you should know where you are without any aids, okay? But when you're navigating busy airspace, it's going to be acceptable at some stage that we're able to use those types of things. So we're allowed now to introduce that into training so you know how to use it. And to be perfectly honest with you, if you take these on your cross-country qualifiers, things like that, you know, don't cheat. But if you get into trouble, okay, if you get into trouble and you, you actually get lost, then use everything you have to get yourself safely back to where you need to be. So if you carry an iPad with you and you use it, if you get into trouble, you know, that's perfectly acceptable. No one's going to chastise you for using nav aids, if you like, to get yourself back out of trouble. But the key thing is you must have that raw skill to be able to time a leg, fly it accurately, and then get to, you know, get to your destination. But like I say, these things are coming into play where they will be accepted, okay? They are being accepted now. The key thing to that as well is, is that there are some functions which will help you with your actual planning. So one of the things it does very, very well is this um, plug sheet that we were talking about. Normally you'd have to calculate all of your headings and speeds and all that kind of stuff manually using that CRP1. Now you'll still have to do that. We'll still make you do that if you come here, but you can quite easily program that in Sky Demon and use it as a backup. As in like you can check your figures. So. If you do your figures on here and then you go into Sky Demon and they're vastly different, Sky Demon's likely to be correct. So you may have made a mistake, but it helps you check your planning to make sure it's spot on. Okay, so that's another reason why you might want to use it. But it's one of those things that when you've got your license, you're probably going to use it and it's a good time to start using it now. So if you do get into trouble on your cross country qualifier or anything like that, you've got some sort of backup nav a for that 150 nautical mile flight and it's something we're going to start introducing to our teaching so that you've got various ways of navigating but the key thing is when you're doing your skills test you need to demonstrate that you can do dead reckoning and that's what they're going to be looking for okay 
So that is available, it's called Sky Demon, um, and you can get that, it's online, and it's about $12.99 a month on a subscription, it's really, really cheap. You do need a phone or an iPad to operate it. A lot of people use their phones for it, but you know, an iPad's a little bit better, iPad mini, something like that, because you can then have a bigger display, okay? But I use it on an iPhone most of the time, it's, it's perfectly fine, okay? Key thing about these things are though, it is reliant on GPS and all that kind of stuff, so it does fail. And that's the reason why, even when this stuff um, is being used, that you should be able to use dead reckoning as your primary source of navigation because if that fails you need to revert back to those skills okay and they do fail ipads overheat especially in the summer batteries go flat if you've forgotten a charger you know you don't want to be flying along and all of a sudden like shit i don't know where i am you know if, you, if you've ever um kind of programmed the route into your car sat nav and, and kind of driven along for ages it's quite easy just to go Oh yeah, you know, turn left here, do that. And you're not actually processing where you are on that journey other than perhaps how long you've got to, to get there. So it's, it's same principles apply with a plane. You know, you want to know when your next waypoint is, when you should arrive and be aware, you know, situationally aware of where you are. So that's the only caveat to using these things is just make sure that you plan both ways. So you've got it on your chart so that if your sky demon fails, then you've still got it um, and you know how to do it. So we've spoken about Starter pack, we call it, with all the flight equipment, the books, all that stuff in there, your knee board. We've spoken briefly about having an accurate timepiece, so a wristwatch and a stopwatch. And we said it might be an idea to get yourself a Sky Demon subscription, A, for when you pass, but B, to help you check your planning at the moment and, and help you on, you know, when you're on your QXC to make sure you're not busting airspace and all that kind of stuff. But the next thing is headsets. Okay, so most schools will allow you to borrow a headset as we do. You might want to consider buying your own headset. So we have a range of headsets here. The cheapest ones are what we call passive headsets. So they have no noise cancelling ability other than the, the cushion that sits around your ear cancels out some of the noise. Okay, there's no electronic assistance to cancel out uh, any noises like you would. Um, I don't know whether anyone's used noise cancelling for... Uh, listening to music but you can get electronic noise um, cancelling functions which are exactly the same as what you listen to music with it's an electronic way of reducing background noise it still gives you the sort of hum of the engine so you can hear that but there's a lot of background noise reduced benefits to that are you are able to hear air traffic slightly better so when you're learning to fly one of the big problems is sort of getting to grips with the language it's used and all that because it's quite um you know, they talk quite fast sometimes when you get into some airfields and, and it's difficult to understand. And also there's a lot of radio chatter, so you might get confused about who's talking to who and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that helps you hear more clearly what's going on. Secondly, when you're listening to your instructor, it's quite handy as well, because if you're, you know, if you're there and you can't quite hear what your instructor's saying, obviously that's a problem as well. So I'm not knocking passive headsets. They do a perfectly fine job. And for most people, it's perfectly fine. But there are two scenarios where I think um, noise cancelling is really important as a student, okay? One is if English isn't your first language, so you might struggle with the language a little bit anyway, so it's better to be more clear and concise when you, when you hear the, the, the uh, chatter on there, so perhaps that's a good option. Also, if you're slightly, you know, if your hearing's not quite as good as it was when you were a bit younger, maybe, you know, then maybe noise cancelling again. It's one of those things, once you try it, you'll never go back. I borrowed a noise cancelling headset once in flight and um, I've never had not had one now because I've realised it's such a massive difference. And aside from that, it's actually protecting your hearing as well. So, so there are several benefits to it, but obviously it costs more than a standard headset. So a standard passive headset, the cheapest ones we have are £145, they're brand new with a two year warranty. They're maintained on site as well. So it's a company called Airheads that provide them, but they do have on site maintenance. So if there's any problems, you know, we can send them away uh, to get repaired or they will just simply give you a new one. There are some noise cancelling options from £324 upwards and then noise cancelling Bluetooth from £389 upwards. But headsets generally, they go up to about 1400 quid. So the latest Bose headset, which is like top of the range, all singing, all dancing, Bluetooth headset, um, it's what generally what the airline pilots tend to wear. They are 1,400 quid. They're great, 
but if you're just a recreational pilot probably not like that cost effective at this stage okay so that's headsets so where to buy them from obviously we stock them here so if you want some air heads ones we do stock them here if you're looking for bose transair uh, i think they're the main dispute uh, distributor for bose so another brand that's similar quality to bose but slightly cheaper is Lightspeed. they've got some decent noise cancelling headsets as well there's dave clark they're pretty good not sure about the noise cancelling ones, but they're you know it's a, they're a really well established brand. They've been around for years, donkey's years. In fact, if you've ever watched any aviation films and people with the green sort of big headsets on, that's Dave Clark, guaranteed. Um, so yeah, Transair they're pretty good for for Bose and and Lightspeed and things. Um, AFE I think they sell Lightspeed. Other stuff, so Sky Demon, you can get their stuff off their website, skydemon.co.uk. Other than that, the starter packs, like I say, get them off AFE online directly, or if you're one of our students, get them off us here. But definitely think about getting your flight equipment early. Get it as soon as you start training. We do have a starter kit and headset bundle on the website for £394 all in, so it's a passive headset and the AFE Stars kit. Sky Demon, I'll get that straight away as well, pretty much. And headset, you know, borrow one off your school if you're happy with that. If you want your own one, like, like we talked about, there's a range of prices with headsets and it largely depends on A, whether you want noise cancelling, what the brand is as well. You always pay for brands, okay? Um, but just be aware that your first headset is a training headset, you know, the likelihood is you'll probably use it for your training, then end up buying a Bose or whatever you end up buying anyway later on. And that one will just be a backup for when you have passengers. Okay. We also have a question bank called PPL Expert where you can practice theory exams online for free. So I hope you found this uh, helpful anyway, because there's quite a lot of equipment you do need, but it's, it's good to know exactly what you need in okay, case so we've been through everything I can think of that you're going to need today everything we recommend anyway there are some other little bits that sometimes people get uh, but that's more personal preference than anything else so um so yeah I hope you found this useful if you enjoy the podcast it'd be really kind if you could leave us a review it really helps us grow the channel and please do subscribe and, and come back uh, to, to watch future episodes we'll see you soon thank you if you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.